This presentation is the second of a two-part review of all of the concepts that we have talked about in Chapter 4. So we're basically working with equations and the uh, or linear equations and their uh, uh, different ways that we can represent them. Um, in the first chapter review, we spent a lot of time talking about slope-intercept form and point-slope form. And in this presentation, we're going to be introducing standard form and going over what we do with uh, equations in standard form. So here's a linear equation that's shown in slope-intercept form. Again, the slope of this line is 2 from this point right here. If I go up two spots and go over to the right 1, that makes this line a slope of 2. And then the 1 is the y-intercept where it's crossing the y-axis at 1. So that's the equation format for slope-intercept form. Um, now we're going to be talking about standard form. And uh, standard form is in the format of ax plus by equals c. And uh, standard form is really great uh, to use for finding uh, vertical and horizontal lines. So let's take a look at an example where we do that. So here I want to figure out the equation of the blue line. And you'll notice it's going through the point 6, 3. Now as this line goes from left to right, the only thing that is not changing, the x changes, keeps getting bigger, 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 higher, higher, higher as it goes from left to right, or smaller going in this direction. But the only thing that doesn't change is the y. So in this case, the equation of the blue line is going to be y equals 3. Now the red line, it's going up and down. <clears throat> the y is always changing, but what's not changing is the x. And in this case, the x is always going to be locked at negative 2. So the equation of the red line is x equals negative 2. <clears throat> All right, let's do some work now with uh, standard equations. So write the equation in standard form of a line with a slope of 5 going through 9, 3. So what we want to do first is put it in point-slope form, okay? So when we're putting it in point-slope form, okay, our slope is going to be 5, my y is going to be 3, and my x is going to be 9. So we're going to put it into point-slope form, okay? So my y of 3 is here, my slope of 5 goes here, and my x of 9 goes here. And now I need to multiply this out. So I need to use the distributive property and multiply uh, 5 times x and 5 times neg uh, negative 9. Okay, when I take 5 times x, I'm going to get 5x. And when I take 5 times 9, I'm going to get negative 45. <clears throat> now we want to put this in standard form. So the x's and the y's are on one side, and the c, or the constant, or the number, is on the right side. So I'm going to move the 5x over. I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides. And nothing can be combined here. I can't combine the negative 5x, I can't combine the y, and I can't combine the negative 3. The other thing is that make sure you don't get rid of this negative. This negative 45 stays here. As I've said in class, one of my main concerns is eugening away the uh, negative. So this negative stays. So when we write it in standard form of ax plus by equals c, the x goes first. So the negative 5x is going to go first in this. The y and the negative 3 keep, keep going along here. The negative 45 stays. Now we're going to add 3 to both sides. And negative 45 plus 3 is negative 42. And this is now in standard form. It's an ax. The a is negative 5. Um, the by, the b is just 1, and 1 times y is y, so there's no physical 1 that goes here. And then the constant of the regular number is negative 42. And that's how we do this problem. All right, so this one's going to be one further step. I still want to write standard form and it goes or for a line that goes through the points 1, 1, and 2, negative 2. First thing I need to do is find the slope. So in the previous problem, I gave you the slope. In this problem, when you're given two points, you're going to have to find the slope. So we're going to use our equation for slope, which is delta y over delta x, or change in y over change in x. And the y is going from 1 to negative 2, which is down 3. And the x is going from 1 to 2, which is up 1. 
and that's a slope of negative 3. And now um, we can fill it in to either point to figure out um, standard form. And uh, I can either use the point 1, 1, or I can use the point 2, negative 2. Now, if you know Mr. Kenyon, you know what point I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick 1, 1. So my x is 1, my y is 1, and my slope is negative 3. So again, my x is 1, my y is 1, my slope is negative 3. Now I need to distribute the 3 times the x, negative 3, sorry, times the x, and the negative 3 times negative 1. And that's going to become negative 3x plus 1. I'm sorry, plus 3, my bad. So I am left with y minus 1 equals negative 3x plus 3. And then I need to move the x over, so I'm going to add x to both sides of the equation. And nothing can be combined here, so I'm going to have the 3x plus the y minus the 1. And then I need to move the 1 over to the right side, so I'm going to add 1 to both sides. And that's going to leave me then with 3x plus y equals 4. I'm going to move on. Um, now we're going to talk about parallel and perpendicular lines. So one of the concepts we talked about in class is that parallel lines have exactly the same slope. So in this case, the slope is 1 third. If I move this line up or down, the one-third or the tiltiness of the slope is going to stay the same. The only thing that's going to change is the b, okay? So to have, have one-third x plus four, I'm going to go up one, two, three, and four, okay? To have one-third x minus five, I'm going to take this down. One, two, three, four, and five, okay? So these lines are parallel but the b's are in different positions, okay? Parallel lines, which you need to get out of this concept, okay, that's super, super important, is that they have the same slope, okay? Perpendicular lines have negative reciprocal slopes. So we talked about reciprocals. That's where I take two numbers to multiply to equal one, okay? Per uh, perpendicular lines have negative reciprocal slopes, okay? When I take the two slopes, I multiply them together to get the number negative 1. So in this case, this line is 1 third x plus 4, y equals 1 third x plus 4. The perpendicular one is going to be the negative reciprocal of 1 third, which is going to be negative 3. Because if I take 1 third times negative 3, I'm going to get negative 1, right? So that's what the big deal is with this. So parallel lines, same slope. Perpendicular lines, negative reciprocal slopes. So let's take a look at a couple examples with each. Okay, Write an equation of the line that passes through the point 6, 9 and is parallel to the given line. Okay, So the 64 here might look kind of daunting, but the 64 we don't even use. Okay, What we need to get out of this equation is what is the slope so we can do parallel. Okay, And the slope of this line is 3. Okay. So the parallel line is going to have a slope of 3, okay? And then all we need to do is fill in our numbers into y equals mx plus b, okay? The slope is going to be 3. My x is going to be 6. And my y is going to be 9. So I just fill this into y equals mx plus b format, okay? Again, um, my y is 9. My x is 6, and my slope is 3. And all I need to do is figure out b here. So I take 3 times 6, and 3 times 6 is 18. And then to figure out b, I'm going to subtract 18 from both sides. So 18 is going to get subtracted away from both sides. So I minus 18 here, and I minus 18 here, and 9 minus 18 is negative 9, okay? So then I have my b and I have my slope, okay? So then I just fill in the equation. y equals my slope of 3, x, and then my y-intercept is negative 9. All right, let's take a look at another one. Write an equation of the line that passes through the point 8, negative 1, and is parallel to the given line, okay? So again, it's parallel, so it's the same exact slope. So my slope is going to be 1 half, so my m is 1 half, my x is uh, 8, and my y is negative 1, okay? So I just fill it in, my slope of a half, 
my y is negative 1 and my x is 8. So negative half times, an eight, times 8 is 4. And then in order to figure out b, I'm going to have to subtract 4 from both sides. So I subtract 4. And my b then becomes negative 5, because 1 minus 4 is negative 5. My slope is 1 half, so my equation is y equals 1 half x minus 5. All right, so now we're going to do the last type of problem I expect you to know for this chapter, and that's finding the slopes of perpendicular lines that, go, or that are perpendicular to a given line. So here I've got an equation y equals 2x minus 17, and what I want is perpendicular, okay? Perpendicular. So it's got to be perpendicular. It's got to be the negative reciprocal of this uh, number here, and the negative reciprocal of 2 is negative 1 half. So my slope is going to be negative 1 half. So my slope is negative 1 half. My x is 4 and my y is 8. So I fill this in, okay? My x is 4, my y is 8, my slope is negative 1 half. Now negative 1 half times 4 is negative 2. And then I'm left with 8 equals negative 2 plus b. I'm going to have to add 2 to both sides. So I add 2 to both sides, and 8 plus 2, so this cancels, 8 plus 2 is 10. So my b is 10, my slope is negative 1 half. So my equation is y equals negative 1 half x plus 10. All right, we're going to do one final example here. Write an equation of a line passing through 3, 4 and perpendicular to this line. So... Um, my slope is one-third, so the perpendicular line is going to be the negative reciprocal. So that's going to be negative 3. Negative 3 times one-third. I just switched. Put the 3 on the top, the 1 on the bottom, and make it negative. So my slope is negative 3. My x is 3. My y is 4. Okay. So again, y is 4. Slope is negative 3. x is 3. I multiply negative 3 times 3 to get negative 9. Right? And now in order to figure out my b, I have to add 9 to both sides. So I add 9 here, and I add 9 here, and 4, 9 is 13. So my b is 13. My slope is negative 3. So my equation is y equals negative 3x plus 13. All right, so that finishes the uh, second part of the Chapter 4 review. So the questions I want you to do on page 289, do questions 15 and 16 on Friday. Don't send them to me. Just hold on to them. Enjoy your weekend. Then on Monday, do page 291, problems 10 and 11. When you have both at page 289 and the 291 assignment, send them to me, okay, on Monday uh, or by Monday uh, in an email. And then on Tuesday, I want you to do questions 18 and 19 on page 289 and questions 12 and 13 on page 291. When you have both that Tuesday and Wednesday assignment done, then you can send it to me in an email. And this will be your uh, practice work and um, be ready to take the Chapter 4 test then, either on Thursday um, or Friday. So the test window will be open on Thursday or Friday. It's worth 38 points. So I need you to be prepared and ready to go. So work really hard on this chapter review assignment. If you have any questions, give me a call. Um, or give Miss B a call. Um, we're here to help you. And um, I'm really excited about the Chapter 4 tests, and I hope you do a great job. Thanks for watching the presentation.